I'm Jolene with Futurism, and today we have an exclusive interview with former Vice President Al Gore about climate change and why we as humans need to care. Former Vice President Gore is about to release a sequel to his 2006 film, An Inconvenient Truth. So we wanted to find out what's changed since then and how climate science has progressed. So, Inconvenient Truth came out in 2006, which was about a decade ago. Why make a sequel now? What's changed since then? Well, there are two big changes, arguably three. First, the, the climate-related extreme weather events are way more numerous now and more destructive. In the last seven years, we've had 11 once-in-a-thousand-year events in the U.S. The second big change is that we've got the solutions now. They were visible on the horizon a decade ago, and the technology experts uh, were convincing when they said they're, they're going to be here. And the third change is we have the Paris Agreement now. One of the goals of Inconvenient Truth was to just get the word out there about climate change. Would you say then that that attempt was by and large successful? Well, I think that it helped. There has been a significant shift in favor of action. Two-thirds of the American people now support action. But even though the threshold we have to clear is higher now, we can clear it. We will clear it with a grassroots up movement. With that in mind then, what are your thoughts on how renewable energies have progressed over the last decade? Are you sort of uplifted, that's promising, or is there a lot more that we should be doing? I'm super encouraged by the trends, particularly in the developing countries that don't have the landline electricity grids that are all built out. They're leapfrogging straight to solar and, and wind. It, it's really quite exciting. There was a contract just signed uh, here in the U.S. for electricity from solar PV cells at less than half the cost of electricity from burning coal or gas. So I, I think it's a really powerful new reality. Leaders of industry have stepped up and various uh, governing officials have stepped up and said, we're going to fulfill our obligations despite what the Trump administration does. And so moving forward, you think that it's going to take individuals and companies like that really pushing and sort of forcing these changes. I think it's ironic that uh, so many business leaders are far ahead of political leaders. You know, Apple is 100% uh, renewable in the U.S. and in China, soon will be globally. Google is uh, taking the same approach. Uh, Microsoft is very responsible. And now a lot of cities have decided to go 100% renewable. I am hopeful. I don't even like to think about the, the prospects for humanity if we fail to act. I think we will act. The remaining question is how long will it take to really cross this political tipping point where we get bold action? The Paris Agreement was a huge historic breakthrough. But even if you take all of the commitments there and add them together, there's still not enough but because they give us such a good start, it lays a foundation for even bolder action in the years ahead. 